Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is the fourth combination lock kit and final combination lock kit that we have. Um, this is the LS7220 based combination lock. It's a hardwired combination lock that has a relay so you can control uh, powerful DC actuators such as solenoids or uh, even some AC appliances. Now, how it works is uh, you hardwire in the code on this panel on the right, and we'll talk in detail about how to hardwire that up so you can make your custom code. Uh, when you enter in the correct code, uh, the relay turns on for a uh, uh, predetermined amount of time based on this ca electrolytic capacitor right here. Uh, it's probably closer to two seconds in my current configuration, and that is using a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So what this video will do is it will show you how it works and it will show you how to wire it and how to put one together from scratch. And we'll also uh, use the act, we'll use the relay in the end of the video to power uh, an AC lamp. So let's uh, power it up and we can talk about how it works. So I've got 10 volts DC on my input uh, terminal block. The input terminal block leads are labeled ground and V+. You can place between 7 and 10 volts DC here. There is a 78 LO5 5 volt regulator on the board that will regulate 5 volts to the circuit, but if you put higher voltages on it, uh, DC voltages that is, when the relay turns on, that will get relatively hot if you place more than 10 volts DC on it. So try to keep your input voltage between 7 volts and 10 volts DC. Now, Again, we'll talk about the how to wire this up later, but I've selected uh, and hardwired it in so that my password is 7, 8, 9, and 10. When that happens, when I pre press it in that order, relay will turn on for uh, about 4 to 5 seconds. Corre I have made a make correction based on my last, uh, my last comment about how long uh, it takes. Now, again, you can swap this resistor for a higher lower value if you want your relay to turn on for a shorter amount of time or longer amount of time. Right now there's a 10 microfarad timing uh, capacitor there so you can gauge how long 10 microfarads will have the relay turned on for. So let's type in a code, listen for the relay. The relay turned on, now wait for it to turn off. So this is great for uh, a door lock. If you have a solenoid connected to the output terminal block, your solenoid plunger will, will um, you can have it so that it pulls when the relay is on, and then when, when the relay is turned off, as long as the solenoid has a spring on it, it'll spring back and lock again. So it's, this is what's great about this. It doesn't stay on. The relay does not stay on. It's on for a, cer a certain amount of time, and then the program resets. Now, if I type in any other code, uh, especially in, in any order, I'll get no reaction unless I press 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, and all of these buttons, the buttons that are not being used, are wired up to uh, the non-used pins. They all, all of the pins have to be wired up. Now, if you look on the left side of the panel here, you might, might not be able to see it. I'm going to talk about the schematic in a few minutes. Uh, the, left the left side of this wire panel are labeled uh, from the top left to the bottom left, uh, 1 to 10. And on the upper right to the bottom right, there are uh, letters from A to J. And... Uh, each button is given a number from S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So S1 to S10. The numbers 1 to 10 on the left correspond to the button. And uh, the letters on the right correspond to uh, how, you, how you enter in your code. But we won't talk about this until we, uh, until we build one up and look at the schematic because it's much, easier to, it's much easier to understand what's going on when you've looked at the schematic. So, first of all, let's build one up, then we'll wire up our code. The kit comes with the custom PCB, a 5-volt relay, a 78LO5 5-volt regulator, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, 10 monetary push buttons, an LS7220 14-pin dip IC, a 14-pin dip socket, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a two-prong terminal block, a three-prong terminal block, two 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a 10K resistor, two 1N4001 power diodes, and a business card. Now, first of all, let's put in our single resistor and our uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. The ceramic capacitor can be placed in the C2 um, footprint. It's labeled 0.1U and our single 10K resistor in the R1 slot, which, uh, which is labeled 
uh, R110K. Now since these, uh, since the capacitor is ceramic, there's no polarity, you can place it in either way, you're not going to have to worry about placing it the wrong way. Same with the resistor, no polarity. Solder them into place, and then we'll uh, place our diodes and our electrolytic capacitors. First of all, let's worry about our diodes. Now when you look at your diodes, you'll notice that one side of the diode has a white line around it, and the other side is just plain black. Your D1 and D2 slots, uh, footprints rather, have a white side as well and a, a non-white side. The white stripe on the footprint indicates the negative or cathode side of the diode. So the white side, the, the side with the white line on it of the diode is your cathode or negative side. So make sure that when you place the diodes uh, into the board that the white line on the diode matches the white line on the footprint or else uh, in the case of D2 when the relay is activated you're going to short circuit the entire device and it's going to reset. You don't want to do that, so make sure make sure that you follow the footprints. For the two 10 microfarad capacitors, they go into the uh, slots for C1 and C3. They are both labeled 10U, or 10 micro. Now, when you look at the electrolytic capacitors, you might notice that there's a long leg and a short leg. The short leg is the negative, the long leg is a positive. On the footprint, there is a plus sign for bo on both footprints indicating the positive side. In this case it's the upper pin. In this case it is the lower pin. You follow the plus sign. Place the longer lead into the hole closest to the plus symbol. That's the positive. Place your shorter lead into the into the opposite pin, into the opposite hole. So once you've soldered those into place, we're going to place our buttons. To make things a little bit easier, we're not going to do the buttons now. We're going to do the transistor, the regulator, and the socket. Now, the uh, transistor and the regulator physically both look the same. There is, uh, however, the writing is different. You, you can read on one of them, it says 2N2222, and the other will say 78LO5. So on the board here, you'll notice that this footprint says 78LO5, and T1 is labeled 2N2222. So you've got to make sure that you don't mix those up, or else the circuit will not work. Be very careful, because you don't want to have to desolder these. You really don't. They're not fun to desolder. In fact, nothing's really all that much fun to desolder unless it's like a resistor or something. Anyway, to, uh, the regulator and the NPN transistor have a flat side and a rounded side. And you'll notice that the footprints both have a rounded side and a flat side. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, you line up the flat side of the flat side of the footprint and the rounded side of the uh, transistor regulator to the rounded side. If you have that uh, turned around, again, your circuits are not going to work. You have to place them in the right way. So match flat to the flat and round to the round for both of those packages. The socket. You'll notice that on the left side of the footprint here, there is a notch. There is a notch on the left side of the socket, and there is a notch on the left side of the IC, the LS7220. What you want to do is make sure that you match the notch of the socket to the notch in the footprint when you solder it into place, so you know which way to put the IC in. Now, if you, I mean, once you place the socket in, you're blocking the footprint. You can't see the footprint anymore, so you have to use the socket as reference. So make sure to match the notch up to the notch up on the footprint because you're going to be using that as a reference for the LS7220. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but I can't stress it enough. If you place it in the wrong way, you're likely going to fry your ship and you're not going to be a happy camper. So let's solder these all into place and then we'll do the buttons. Your buttons, S1 to S10, really only fit in one way. Line up the holes and they literally should pop in if you place a little bit of pressure on them. Pop them all in and solder them all into place. Each button has four leads. Make sure to solder them all. Uh, I'd like to add that um, when you're soldering them, make sure that they are flat on the board. You don't want to solder one on from the back side and realize that one's sticking out a little bit. It just won't look very good. When you pop them in, they should be flat to the board. Once in a while, you'll find one that starts to fall out a little bit when you turn the board around. So make sure that they're all flat when you solder them in. Solder them all into place. Then we'll take one more step, solder the relay and the two terminal blocks. Then we'll talk about the schematic, and then we'll wire up an example. Lastly, we're going to talk about the relay and the two terminal blocks. The relay only fits in one way. There's three pins on one side, two on the other. Uh, when you place it in, make sure that you place a healthy amount of solder on each on each pad. There's a lot of pads, so make sure it's, it's nicely filled because there's potentially going to be a lot of power along those lines depending on what you're powering. Um, you got your two terminal blocks. Make sure that the the uh, the screw terminals are facing outwards. 
You don't want to have them facing inwards or else you're not going to be able to wire stuff up to this device. So when you place it in, make sure that the terminals are facing out. So solder those all into place, healthy solder joints, then we'll quickly look at the schematic and then we'll wire up our code. Right now we're not actually looking at the board schematic, we're looking at the uh, LS7220 schematic. So notice that there's a bunch of buttons that are connected commonly to pin number two. Those are the unselected keys. Pin number three is T1, which is code select one. And this button is the first button that will be pushed in sequence. Uh, pin four is T2, pin five is T3, and pin six is T4. So in that order, whatever buttons you hook up to those in order from one to four will be your code. So if you put uh, button 6 to pin 3, button 7 to pin 4, button 8 to pin 5, and button 9 to pin 6. That will be the order that you have to press the buttons in in order to activate the relay. So with that in mind, we have to make sure that all of our buttons that aren't going to be part of our, our sequence are all connected in commonly to pin 2 and uh, that we hook up whatever buttons we want we want to hardwire to pins 3, 4, 5, 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that on the board. I'll talk about the uh, wiring here again. On the left hand side you've got numbers from 1 to 10. 1 corresponds with S1, 2 corresponds with S2, 3 corresponds with ST or S3 and so on. The right hand side is labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Now they have, what you want to do is, here is you want to connect your buttons to, from on the left, to the chip selections which are on the right. A to F are your unselected pins. So if you're not going to use uh, S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, just connect, uh, connect them in any order to the A to F pins. Uh, and if you, uh, G is your code 1 pin. So if your first number, like mine, is going to be S7, you want to connect pin 7 on the left to G on the right. Uh, your second co code digit will be H. So if you want 8 to be your second code digit, connect 8 to H. And, uh, your the I pin is your third code in the digit, or third digit in the code rather. Uh, connect nine to I, and if you want ten to be your final digit, connect that to J. So ten to J. That's really easy. That that's the easiest way to wire it up is left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. You can actually do that, and your code will be seven, eight, nine, and ten. However, say I wanted ten to be my first digit, I would connect ten to G. And uh, say I wanted 9 to be my second digit, I'd connect pin 9 to pin H. If I want 8 to be my third digit, connect pin 8 to pin I. And lastly, if I want 7 to be my last digit, I will connect pin 7 to pin J on the right. Again, all the digits that are not used, make sure to connect them in any order from A to F. So you can connect, if you're, in this case we're not using S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. Connect them in any order to uh, pins A, B, C, D, E, F. Because in, they're all connected internally. It doesn't matter. So what we'll do is I'll quickly wire up, I'll wire up uh, one up to, uh, I'll wire my code up to be 10, 9, 8, 7 in that order. And I'll wire all the rest of the buttons to pins A to F. Uh, after I'm done that, I'll quickly show you my wiring, and then we'll uh, we'll hook up some AC to this to this relay board, and we'll power it up. I know this looks messy, but I had to make it messy so that I could show you. You don't need to make it this messy. Uh, the yellow wires are my are my code wires, and I've just added jumpers directly across for uh, from one to six, and on the right side uh, A to F. Now I've, right now I've got S10 connected to pin G. Uh, so 10 to G, that is our first, uh, for first digit. I've got 9 to H soldered together, shorted. I've got S8 to pin I uh, for our third digit, and S7 to J as our fourth digit. So I've got it powered on, 
if I press any of the other buttons, A to F connected to uh, S1 to S6, then that will uh, make me start my code over again. So right now, if I want the code to work, I have to press 10, 9, 8, 7 in that order. Relay turns on. Relay turns off. Okay, I hope I hope you understand that. It's a little bit complicated, but I hope you understand that. Uh, now what I'll do is uh, I will hook this up to uh, to my lamp. On the relay, there are three pins. From the top, there's NC. NC stands for normally connected. There's the CO pin, which is in the middle, which is the common pin. And there's the NO pin, which is the normally open pin. Now, the common pin is connected internally to the NC pin when the relay is off. When the relay is activated, the CO pin is no longer connected to the NC pin. It becomes connected to the NO pin. So what I did was I took a, a dollar store um, power block, opened it up, and severed the hot wire, which is a black wire, cut it in half, connected one side to the CO pin and the other side to the normally open pin, the NO pin. So when the relay activates, it reconnects that wire internally through the relay. Now, disclaimer time, don't mess around with this stuff unless you know what you're doing. It's extremely dangerous. Dangerous. You can really hurt yourself. You can kill yourself. If you have no experience with this stuff, with high voltage, consult with someone who does. I'm not going to take any responsibility for anyone hurting themselves. You do this at your own risk. Now, this is why I like working with low voltage DC. But anyway, so the other side of the wire is connected to my AC source. So when the relay activates, it, it reconnects AC to the power bar, which is connected to my lamp. As you can see, I've got a power supply uh, providing the board with the 10 volts DC, in the or 7 to 10 volts DC. So now, what I'll do is I'll bring the camera back, I'll power it on, I'll enter in the code, and you'll see the lamp turn on for a short period of time. I'd like to add that you don't have to use AC, I just like to use AC as a demonstration. You also don't want to power your microwave with this. The, re the traces on the relay are not strong enough to handle that much current. Don't power a huge 19 inch TV. A small TV would be okay, an LCD would be fine, uh, a lamp in this case, uh, a, a DC solenoid, a DC motor. So let's type in our code. 10, 9, 8, 7. Relay will turn on for a short period of time, and then it'll turn off. So let's do it again. 10, 9, 8, 7. There you go. So thanks for watching, guys. This kit can be found at engineeringshock.com or at electroniclessons.com, which takes you to our eBay store. we got tons of new stuff, so check us out. Thanks for watching, everyone.